In this video, I'd like to apply the product rule for derivatives. We'll take the derivative of a few functions. Now, before we get started, let's just review what is the product rule. Well, if we're taking the derivative of a function that can be written as the product of two functions, Then the product rule says we take the derivative one factor at a time. So we could say the derivative is equal to well, f of x times the derivative of g of x. So first we take the derivative of the, of the g of x part of the product and then switch it up. We'll do g of x times the derivative of f of x. Okay, so there's our product rule. And you'll see in this first example, f of x, we have a product. Now, we wouldn't normally write it with parentheses, of course, but we have negative 5x squared, and that's being multiplied by the cosine of x. Okay, so when we take the derivative of this function, f prime of x, applying the product rule for derivatives, well, f of x, so we'll, we'll call this f, and we'll call this g, and to align this up with our, with our formula above. So we take the f part of the function, which is negative 5, x squared times the derivative of g. And we've seen previously that the derivative of the cosine function is negative sine of x. Okay, so then we'll switch it up. We leave the cosine function alone. And we take the derivative of negative 5x squared. So now we're applying the power rule. And so I, I said in a previous video, there's four main derivative rules. This is the second one on the list. We've talked about the power rule. Now we're talking about the product rule. Then we'll get later on to the quotient and chain rules. A lot of times you're gonna be doing, uh, you're gonna be applying more than one of those rules within an individual problem. Plus we have the rule for the rules for the trigonometric functions. So applying the power rule to the negative five X squared, that should be a negative 10 X. The two comes out front as a multiple and drops by one. Okay, so anytime you're applying a derivative rule, after that, you always have to simplify whenever possible. So it looks like these two negatives become positive. So we have five X squared sine of X minus a 10 X cosine of x. Now that's probably an okay way to leave the answer if uh, if you want to factor it, which I usually do whenever possible I factor, we could factor out the 5 and an x. So we could factor out a 5x here. And we're left with x times the sine of x. So we took the 5 out, we took one of these x's out, so we're left with an x and a sine of x minus, well, if we're taking the five out, there's a two. So the 10 is five times two. There's a two left over. And we have the cosine of X. So that looks like a nicely simplified version of our derivative. So there's always, anytime you're applying a derivative rule, there's always algebra that comes afterwards. There's always simplifying. Okay. So let's look at the g of t function. The derivative of g of t, g prime of t. So again, we have a, let me use a different color here. We have a product of a function of t times another function of t. So t to the third power plus 4t, the first one, we could 
leave that, take the derivative of the second. So the derivative, again, using the power rule, 2 comes out front, drops by 1, so that's a 6t, plus the derivative of 2t would be 2, and the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, then we'll leave the second one, the 3t squared plus 2t minus 5, and we'll take the derivative give myself a little bit more room here. We'll take the derivative of t cubed plus 4t. So again, power rule on the t cubed, that will be 3t squared, and the derivative of 4t is 4. Okay, so it looks like we have some simplifying to do here. So we can start off by multiplying everything out splitting up all these powers of t and then recollecting all the like terms. So, multi Oop, that was an accident. So, multiply out the uh, the first product. Foil this out. First times first. Outer times outer. Inner times inner. Last times last. If you want to follow the uh, foiling method. So, either way, just multiply everything through. Let me get rid of this. It's a little busy. Okay, so first times first, t cubed times 6t. So that's 6t to the fourth power. 2 times t cubed. So we have a 2t cubed. 4t times 6t. Well, 4 times 6 is 24, and t times t is t squared. And last times last, 2 times 4t will give us an 8t. Next. So we have to multiply this out. And so I think uh, we can take the 3t squared and multiply it to each term. Then we could take the 4 and multiply it to each term, or however you want to do. This is the way I organize these, these polynomial multiplications. Okay, so multiply each of these three terms by 3t squared. So we'll get 3t squared times 3t squared. That'll give us 9t to the fourth power plus 3t squared times 2t. So that's looking like 6t to the third power. And then a 3t squared times the minus 5, so we're at minus 15t to the second power. All right, and then multiply through the 4. 4 times each of these terms, so 4 times 3t squared. That should be 12t squared. 4 times 2t is an 8t. And we have just enough room for the minus 20, or negative 5 times 4. All right, so let's see, like terms. We've got t to the fourth power. We've got some t to the third powers. Let's see, we've got t to the second t to the second, t to the second. Am I miss Oh, t to the first power and t to the first power. So when we combine like terms, let's see, 6 and 9 is 15, so we have 15, t to the fourth, orange. 2 and 6 is 8, so we have 8, t to the third power. Green, 24 and 12 is 36, minus the 15 is 21, so we have 21 t to the second power. Uh, blue, we have 8 and 8, so that's a 16 t, and then finally a minus 20. All right. 
and that looks good. Uh, that's not something I want to factor or it, don't even know if it's even factorable. So you want to leave your final answer either in fully factored form or fully multiplied out form. Not what we had here. Our first step was sort of in the middle. We had a, a factored piece here and then a factored piece here and they were two separate terms. So that's sort of in the middle of the two forms. All right, looking good. Let's do one more. So we have y equals the fourth root of theta times sine of theta. All right, so what I'm going to do is to deal with this fourth root, we're going to rewrite this using a fractional exponent. Oh, don't want the rainbow there. We're going to rewrite this as theta to the one fourth power times the sine of theta. So now we can apply the power rule on the derivative of the fourth root. All right. So when we take the derivative y prime, we'll have the first factor, which is theta to the one fourth times the derivative of the second, which is the cosine of theta plus the second, which is the sine of theta, times the derivative of the first, which according to the power rule, the one fourth comes out front and decreases by one. All right, so there's our derivative. Now let's do some simplifying. You never want to leave negative exponents in your simplified answer. So y prime should equal theta to the one fourth times cosine of theta plus, looks like we have the sine of theta over four theta to the three fourths power, the, the one fourth, so the four is on the bottom and we bring this negative exponent to the bottom, it becomes positive. All right, and we could maybe combine these two terms by getting a common denominator. So what we could do is multiply this first term by four theta to the three fourths power over four theta to the three fourths power. So now we'll have y prime equals, so now we'll have a common denominator for theta to the three fourths. And let's see, four, well, theta, this works out nicely, theta to the three fourths times theta to the one fourth, we add the exponents, so that's just theta. So four times theta times cosine of theta plus the sine of theta. All right, so that's a nice looking simplified derivative. Okay, so that about does it for this video. Three examples of the product rule. And up next, we can look at extending the product rule to functions that are written as three products or more. In each of these cases, we had the product of two functions and applied the power rule.